Greetings to all and welcome to the 2020 Plymouth Virtual Memorial Day Remembrance. I am Conrad Kaskowski, United States Air Force veteran and adjutant for the Plymouth Ladwig Zincraft American Legion Post 243. Due to the COVID-19 pandemic, the annual Memorial Day events had to be canceled. To veterans, this is a very special day so we can remember our fellow soldiers, Marines, sailors, and airmen that paid the ultimate price for our country. With the sponsorship help of Mike Burkhardt Ford of Plymouth and the video production company Silverwater Productions, also of Plymouth, we can offer you a look back at past Plymouth Memorial Day events. Now, before we get started, I would like to introduce Kelly Wilfer, United States Army veteran and commander of the Plymouth American Legion Post, and Don Pullman, United States Army veteran and mayor of Plymouth. In March, the Ladwig Zincroft American Legion Post turned 100 years old, and we were to host the Memorial Day Parade. However, the Safer at Home order will be, there will be no parade and no brat fry. Memorial Day is typically spent recalling the valor of men and women who died in combat. We must also never forget those quiet professionals who answered that noble calling to serve the people of the United States in peacetime as well. Let's all remember all others who have sacrificed their lives while serving during this pandemic. Memorial Day is a time to reflect and remember the brave men and women who have sacrificed their lives for our freedom and our way of life. You can remember these men and women by flying our nation's flag, hang a wreath, put a flag in the cemetery, say a prayer, or have a moment of silence. These are just to name a few. God bless those deployed and in harm's way and providing us the opportunity to enjoy this day in our great nation. God bless our nation during these challenging times. If you have served in the armed forces and have been honorably discharged, I invite you to become a member of the largest veteran organization, which is the American Legion. Together, we can make a difference. Good morning. Today, Memorial Day, we especially honor the memory of our brothers and sisters who have given the ultimate sacrifice in the service of their country and have gone to their eternal resting place. It is an honor and a privilege to represent the city of Plymouth and the community. We say thank you for your sacrifice. They are the heroes who gave us our freedom, who gave us our right of worship, and who gave us the right to speak, who gave us our way of life. Help us remember their valor and devotion to God and country. May God bless you and yours. Memorial Day in Plymouth started with a parade along Mill Street and ending at Union Cemetery. The video will have a selection of past parades. Welcome to TV 14 presentation of the Memorial Day Parade here in Plymouth. And as you see, we start out the parade, and we start the parade every year with the police escort, motorcycle police escort, coming around the corner, I guess making a stop. This is Matt Kaskowski alongside Gary Kaiser the, uh, with the video. And we see in the background that is the American Legion Post 243, the flag bearers. Looks like they're going to fire off a couple shots.
following up is the Gold Star Mothers. Debbie Freeman and Karen Schultz, escorted by members of the Army National Guard. That's Debbie. Oh, that's your boat there. Gold Star Mothers had a son or daughter that served in the armed forces and died in service to the country that this world might be a better place. the military families connect. They provide a network of families that, with deployed troops. They assist families for any needs or supports. We're getting right now a great shot of the high school band directed by Jason Sobranik, another big crowd favorite. I know when I was in the band, I marched in a few of these. I feel for the sousaphone players. Tough on a hot day, but look at it coming around. Looking real sharp. And there we see Jason Sobranik, the director of the Plymouth High School Band. Thank you. 
Let me see uh, Mayor Don Pullman walking around, deciding not to ride in the car. Ron Alden greeting. Great hats there, by the way. Wow. Those are impressive. So we have the mayor. So, and we have the Girl Scouts. Together, a nice, a nice crew. Brownies, I think, are mixed in there too. Oh, throwing candy, of course. That was my favorite part when I was a kid. Here are the brownies. Oh, fire and candy, all the kids come out. <laughs> And we have the Cub Scouts. Right here in Plymouth, pack 3849. They'll be filed by the Boy Scouts. Scouts handing out freezy pops. Nice of them. And there's uh, that's a that's a good one. That's a really nice treat there. There's the uh, Boy Scouts. <coughs> it's like Troop 851 and Troop 874. train. This is the Railroad Association always pulling out the train. Wow. <laughs> it really winds that thing up. It's also sponsored by the Plymouth Historical Society and the Plymouth Model Railroad Club. The trains being a big part of Plymouth history, and he's going to do a whole lap right here.
as he comes around. Oh, you know, I've seen this car right around town. I love it. It's just big gorilla and all. <laughs> And we got some bikes coming through. A nice pace car for the Plymouth Dirt Track Racing up on Saturday nights. Followed by the Masonic Lodge. Good community service organization. Yeah, a few more Masons. And coming through again, the end of the Masons. right now but still a very nice day out. It's 60 degrees as we have the Lions Club coming forward here. department bringing out bringing out the old gear. How cool is that? Look at that ladder truck. So stay tuned for the ceremony. And otherwise as the fire department brings up the rear of the parade I wanna take up to you again. Thank you for watching. Thank you for joining us. And again, thank you for all those who've served. After the parade, the high school band and parade attendees settled in at Union Cemetery for a time to remember what the day is all about. Silverwater Productions added a montage of pictures as we reflect on the day while the high school band had played the Navy hymn, which was played after the guest speaker. The cemetery event ends with the playing of taps. As a reminder of the day, photos of various veteran cemeteries has been added to this video. Right now we're gonna begin an opening invocation by our post chaplain. Dave Ron, Vietnam War veteran, and he served as a United States Army medic. O oh Lord, grant us the greet of coming of the day in peace. Help us in all things to rely upon your holy will. In every hour of the day, reveal your will to us. Bless our dealings with all who serve. Teach us to treat all that come to us throughout the day with peace of soul and with firm conviction that your will governs all. In all deeds and words, guide our thoughts and feelings in the unforeseen events. Let me not forget that all are sent by you. Teach us to act firmly and wisely without embittering and embarrassing others. Give us strength to bear the fatigue of the coming day with all it shall bring. Amen. Now for all that are physically able to stand, please remove your head cover as we have Boy Scout John Grassy, Troop 183 of Brookfield, 
It's going to be followed by the national anthem performed by the Plymouth School Band under the direction of Mr. Jason Sobrani. row on row that mark their place and in the sky the larks still bravely singing fly scarce heard amid the guns blow we are the dead short days ago we lived felt dawn saw sunset glow loved and were loved and now we lie in flanders fields take up our quarrel with the foe to you from flailing hands we throw the torch be yours to hold it high if you break faith with us who die we shall not sleep though poppies grow in flanders fields At this time, the Plymouth High School Band will play the Armed Forces Medley, and as it's known, the March of the Armed Forces. At this time, we will acknowledge the service members that are in our audience today, and we would like to ask those service members to stand and salute for their branch when they hear their theme.
Air Force. stranger to serving his community, as you can see by his uniform. He is currently a patrol sergeant with the Sheboygan County Sheriff's Department, and actually he's on duty right now. <laughs> I asked and was granted permission from the sheriff to invite him to be our speaker. He did wear a different uniform for 20 years. He was a member of the United States Army, and then a member of the Wisconsin Army National Guard. He finished his career as first sergeant with the 57th Field Artillery Brigade, B Battery, 1st Battalion, 121st Field Artillery, better known to Plymouth citizens as Bravo Company. His awards and decorations are expert marksman, recipient of the Honorable Order of St. Barbara, two National Defense Ribbons, Army Service Ribbon, Global War on Terrorism and Operation Iraqi Freedom Campaign Medals, Combat Action Badge, Good Conduct Medal, two Army Achievement Medals, two Army Commendation Medals, Meritorious Medal, Service Medal, and the Bronze Star. Plymouth Bravo Company deployed in April of 2006 with Iraq as their destination and returned home July of 2007. Please give a warm welcome to that company's first sergeant, Sergeant Brad York. Thank you. You haven't heard my speech yet, so I decided to save your applause, right? Okay, bear with me. I have about 40 minutes of material here, okay? <laughs> All right. Uh, sometime in January of this year, I received a call from Mr. Kaskowski from the BFW asking if I would speak at today's Memorial Day tribute. Uh, I, admit, I must admit, at first I was hesitant. I wasn't sure if this was something that I wanted to do. Actually, this is something that I did not want to do. I asked Conrad, well, what do you want me to say? What, what would I talk about? And as you can see, nonchalantly, ah, whatever. You just come up here and say something. You just want to hear some words from you. So we just want you to be our guest speaker. Uh, in the back of my mind, I thought he doesn't know what he's asking for because I'm an old, crusty, retired first sergeant with 20 years of experience in the United States Army. Uh, as with any first sergeant, my communication skills have degenerated to having the innate ability to use vulgar, offensive, and what some would consider naughty words in practically every sentence that I use. I also found that I have an almost instinctive, natural-like capability to make people feel bad about themselves and even make those quiet times. <laughs> well, Conrad, you invited me, so you got it, buddy. Here we go. <laughs> Actually, I'm kidding. I'm not crusty or old. For those who think otherwise, we're going to have some words. <laughs> Actually, I was taken aback when I said earlier that I did not want to do this. It was not because I felt today was not worth my time. Uh, it was because I was humbled to be asked to speak in front of those who have served, those who have sacrificed. In my mind, I do not feel I'm worthy enough of such an honorable undertaking. In fact, I'm not one who likes to be in the spotlight when it comes to serving our country. I did not serve to be placed upon stage to boast about my time serving and the things I believe I am owed. I am owed nothing and I want nothing. So here I am, not for me to be praised, but to praise others. For that I'm honored. Like my grandfather who served in the Navy during World War II, my father who served in the Corps. 
war during Vietnam. My younger brother, who served in the Army during Operation Desert Shield, I am a veteran. I played a part in Operation Iraqi Freedom. I know what Memorial Day is all about. Some think Memorial Day is part of a three-day weekend. It's not. Some think it kicks off the beginning of summer. It does not, and I hate to disappoint you, but summer's next month. Some even think it's a major shopping day where great deals are to be had. Memorial Day is not this either. Memorial Day is a time to reflect. It is a time to remember. Not war, not military campaigns, not the political gobbledygook that comes with each. Memorial Day is a time to reflect on the sacrifices made by the individual, the individual soldier. It is a time to remember the costs that have been paid in the pursuit of defending not only our freedom, but the freedom of those around the world. The, the sacrifices made by our armed forces are viewed all too often as a Hollywood abstract, as images seen on television and in the movies. This is not the case. I can guarantee you there is no theatrical flair, no background music, no plot line to follow. The sacrifices made by soldiers are very real. To be a soldier at war requires a 24 hour, seven day a week, 365 day a year commitment. There are no holidays, no weekends, no snow days, no sick days, and few if any privileges. To our armed forces, conflict brings upon them the inescapable reality of death. Why would they do this? Why do they do this? Death. While most choose the path of least resistance, it is the men and women of our armed forces that have shown and continue to show that their sense of duty is so strong that they are willing to sacrifice their last full measure in order to contribute to a higher cause. They sacrifice for a higher cause. They sacrifice for you. They sacrifice for me. They sacrifice for your religion, not theirs. They sacrifice for your political affiliation, not theirs. They sacrifice for your ethnic background, not their own. In each instance, without regard to the popular opinion of the moment, American soldiers continue to sacrifice for freedom and to preserve this nation and its ideals to all that call it home. The freedom, the freedom, we, the freedom to live the way we do has its cost, and the American soldier that picks up the check in order for the rest of us to enjoy and live our, to our fullest potential. Every second of every day, even now at this very moment, there's a soldier somewhere giving all he or she, she has to give for this higher cause including their life. Soldiers are not the ones hanging the flags in their window or flaunting a bumper sticker that says support the troops. They are the ones defending that flag in the window. They are the ones defending another country's flag. They support the troops, not by a bumper sticker, but by standing side by side with fellow comrades. Excuse me, at arms in some distant land while unthinkable events unfold. They cannot sacrifice more. They cannot give more. But if they could, they would. The physical and moral courage that I personally witnessed is something to be proud of. During my time in Iraq, my 183 soldier travels hundreds of thousands of miles conducting convoy and route security. They travel from the southern tip of Iraq bordering Kuwait to the northern tip of Iraq bordering Turkey. Their mission took them to well-known cities such as Mosul, Tikrit, Kirkuk, Basra, Fallujah, and Baghdad. They placed themselves in harm's way on a daily basis. Were they shot at with small arms fire, mortar fire, and rocket fire? Yes. Were improv improvised explosive devices or IED used against them? Yes. Were my soldiers seriously injured? Yes. Were soldiers killed? Yes. Not, to, not once did any of my men approach me and tell me they wanted out, or that they had enough of the demanding standards and threats of combat. I had troops that were attacked, regroup, re-equip, re-arm, and continue the mission without so much as batting an eye or looking for sympathy. They did not say they were tired of being shot at, that they were tired of falling victim to roadside bombs, or that the long and dangerous hours on mission and blistering 140 degree weather was wearing on them. Were they scared? Yes. Fearful for their life? Yes. Absolutely despise it? Yes. But each understood their purpose, a purpose defined by actions rather than bumper stickers, on flags, and words. Deep 
down, they understood their time on mission was not for them, but for others. To put things into perspective on this Memorial Day, let me quote the words from Charles M. Province. It is the soldier, not the reporter, who has given us freedom of press. It is the soldier, not the poet, who has given us freedom of speech. It is the soldier, not the campus organizer, who has given us the freedom to demonstrate. It is the soldier, not the lawyer, who has given us the right to a fair trial. And it is the soldier that salutes the flag, who serves the flag, and whose coffin is dragged draped by the flag, who allows the protester to burn the flag. So on this Memorial Day, I ask that you join me in giving thanks to all the men and women, past and present, in America's armed forces for the, all the sacrifices they have made. Although they may not want it or ask for it, we owe each and every one of them a great debt of gratitude for what they did and what they stand for. In other words, remember the true meaning and purpose of Memorial Day. Thank you. I now call upon Mandy Sagal again. She will sing God Bless America and will be accompanied by Tori Aquino.
of others possible. More than a million U.S. heroes had their lives cut short while fighting in wars since the American Revolution. Now, time only permits us to just say a few of the remarkable stories. A century ago, America was engaged in the war to end all wars, World War I. The Ladwick Zinc Graft, American Legion Post, remembers, as you've heard, Walter Ladwick, Clarence Zinc Graft, the two Plymouth residents that were killed in action during the war. This podium has the names of those that gave the ultimate sacrifice for Plymouth, both in world wars, Korea, Vietnam, and the current global war on terrorism. I want you to fast forward 50 years from that time to another continent, yet another determined group of young American heroes. Sharon Lane was committed to caring for those heroes and entered the Army Nurse Corps in 1968. A year later, the 25-year-old from North Industry, Ohio, was working hard at the 312th Evacuation Hospital in Chulai, South Vietnam. Women were exempted from the draft. First Lieutenant Lane was a volunteer, and she was where she wanted to be, and that happened to be with wounded soldiers. That was not surprising, according to her mother, who once told the reporter as a child she was always caring for someone or something. She always had a cat or dog or some animal that she took care of. As our nation observed Vietnam War Veterans Day on March 29th, there was no Wikipedia page for Lieutenant Lane. She did not have the medals of Audie Murphy, Sergeant Elvin York, just name a couple of heroes. Rocket and mortar attacks were common at her base in July. In a letter home, she, she wrote about one of the attacks. We got all the patients under the beds that we could and put mattresses over the ones in traction. Very interesting place, but hardly anyone here is scared. It's just like a part of the job. And on June 8, 1969, First Lieutenant uh, Sharon Lane made the ultimate sacrifice after a 122 millimeter rocket blasted through her ward, killing her and a 12-year-old Vietnamese girl. Sharon Lane was the only female United States Army nurse to be killed by enemy fire during the Vietnam War. Seven others died of either illness or accidents. In total, uh, there were also 59 civilian women that died in that war. But I want you to make note of this. Here in Plymouth, United States Army nurse Julia Schmidt Barnes died in a plane crash March 4th, 1945, over the Bur uh, Burma jungle. They were transporting wounded soldiers. She is, I think, buried in Woodland. All soldiers, sail sailors, airmen, Coast Guardsmen, Marines have made this ultimate sacrifice for this nation. We also extend our gratitude and support for a group that nobody wants to join but it's already given their country so much. That's the Gold Star family. We had a Gold Star family dad that was in the parade uh, right behind, and with the in between, he was in between the two groups, the Legion and the VFW. That is uh, Bill Prenning. His son, Brian, killed in action in Iraq on uh, November 12, 2004. He would be here today. <coughs> But Brian's 30 battle buddies are at his house right now. And they've been doing this for the past 13 years. So as we observe Memorial Day every year, these families remember their fallen loved ones every day. Children without parents, gold star mothers and fathers, spouses and siblings, they can still hear the voices of those that they lost. So it's up to us to hear their voices of these families offer our support 
express our highest gratitude. Whether the people we remembered served in World War I, World War II, Korea, Vietnam, the war on, on global terms, or any other place or time in between, please say thank you for the freedom that you have given us. We are here because of you. Now, as we reflect on these heroes, the Plymouth High School Band will perform the Navy Hymn. with a rifle volley by the Post Honor Guard and taps by Plymouth High School students Joseph Sopranic and Justin Schmidt.
Thank you for taking the time to view this video. This Memorial Day as we continue to honor those who fell for us in battle, let us also pause to remember those who are listed as missing in action. For those families, every day is Memorial Day. May God bless them. May God bless you for remembering them here today. Thank you.